said, I'm thankful to Mayur and Hormone India team. Uh, my topic is a very nice topic. Uh, I requested for this topic because there is a lot many uh, common things between obesity and every everywhere this acronym obesity is in this conference. Well, whether it's sarcopenic obesity, whether it's metabolic healthy obesity, unhealthy obesity and whatever. So, so uh, whether we are different, whether we are, on the, we are on the same boat and whether why we need to talk so much on obesity. So how much we differ in this definition of metabolic healthy obesity? Uh, sorry, our, uh, yes. Introduction that according to WHO, obesity is defined as abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that presents a risk to health. And obesity contributes to reducing life expectancy throughout the globe because of so many reasons. And I'll show you the reasons. And well enough, everybody knows that. So, why slides are not changing smoothly? These are the reasons. And this, these slides have been repeatedly presented in this forum. And I'll not go, but I'll say that the, the adipose tissue is regarded as a big endocrine organ nowadays. And behind this hypothesis, there is so many things. We have given so much calories, so much things to this adipose tissue in throughout the ages after, after being Adi Mano to now uh, being uh, Robot Mano. We have done maximum benefit to these adipose tissues because of our lifestyle and everything. And that's why we are in the era, we are in the bombarded era of type 2 diabetes, NFLD, hypertension, dyslipidemia and CBD risk factors. But, but there is a big but that whether our obesity can be healthy obesity or whether all obesity can be classified as the bad obesity. This heterogeneity character of obesity is very nice and that will give insight to future endeavors of our research. I, when I was Googling and researching on the papers, there are metabolic healthy obesity. The recent papers for Gordon and Smith with has fact and fantasy is very wonderful defined and everybody should read that uh, that publication in JCI and uh, it says that although obesity is typically associated with metabolic dysfunction and cardiometabolic diseases some people with obesity are protected from many of the many adverse metabolic effects of this excess body fat and this is known as metabolic healthy obesity and we need to change the concept that every obese patient is a, is a potential candidate. But there are changes and this phase of transition happens because of set point. And these, uh, these set points need to be overwhelmed and properly physically, scientifically taken by all of us. Why my slides are not changing? It's taking a time. Concept of metabolic healthy obesity. It has been given in 1950, long way back, by Gene Beck in his observations that with obesity, having different predisposition to diabetes, every obese patient is not going to be diabetic. Why? And this concept of MHO may serve as model to better understand the mechanisms linking to obesity and to cardiometabolic disorders. Metabolically healthy obesity has been frequently defined by absence of any metabolic disorder or CV disease, including type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, hypertension, and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in person with defined obesity by BMI index. And these are the different, different orchestra going inside the body in cardiorespiratory fitness, in cardio vascular function in multi-organ insulin resistance, other features like metabolic syndrome components. And these, these orchestra is going on, going on, going on. And that decide whether a patient will remain MHO or MU. MU is metabolically unhealthy obesity and MHO is metabolically healthy obesity. I am not going to waste too much time, but I'll say this is the definition and proposed criteria for defining metabolically healthy obesity. And this basic criteria is that absence of any of the diagnosis or therapy of cardiometabolic illness or disease, 
means absence of pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, NFLD, CKD, or CVD, or treatment with blood pressure, lipid, or diabetes medication in presence of obesity. So, healthy, car healthy cardiometabolic profile, which is given here, including OGTT, blood pressure, SGLC, fasting triglyceride, every criteria. And with advanced criteria, you have intralipid, intrahepatic lipid content less than 5% of liver volume. Already diagnosed with NFLD, then it's less than 5% of hepatocytes with intracellular TG by histology. Insulin sensitivity, if you go by euglycemic clamp studies, then these are the novel criteria. You can have a fancy criteria of these, these things if you have a lab augmented values for that or patient is able to go for such kind of screening. Otherwise, the clinical criteria are well sufficing that. What is the prevalence of MHO? It has been shown to 4.2, 13.6, a large spectrum, a vague spectrum is uh, in have been studied in Chinese adult population. And recent meta-analysis of 12 cohort and seven intervention studies have found that there is 35% prevalence, which is very bad. That's why we say in our OPD also, many of the time when obese patients show, uh, comes to us, we have a high index of suspicion. In spite of that, we are not getting every obese patient to be a diabetic patient. And this is the clue for our future. We need to justify our research work from this point of view that every obese patient can't be a potential candidate for these kind of disease. And why? If they, they, they can do so with such obese uh, backup, then why? The, what are the uh, protective factors? The biological mechanisms. Stephen et al. linked high liver fat content and predominantly abdominal, including visceral obesity, to metabolically unhealthy obesity, where there is greater insulin sensitivity, better insulin secretion, cardiorespiratory fitness remains good, and lower body subcutaneous fat mass, uh, mat, fat mass was uh, measured, which is associated with healthy type of obesity. Mm -hmm. And this slide uh, has just uh, shown uh, there is a there is a two sumos. One is metabolically unhealthy and other is a metabolically healthy obese, uh, obese guy. So uh, this slide have been repeatedly shown in many of the conferences. And I'll again say that BMI is not at all the criteria. Your lower liver fat contain your high amount of lack fat, your high cardiorespiratory fitness and reserve, insulin sensitivity and normal inflammatory markers are the main criteria behind that. So transitions happen. Every every of our patient, we are human beings. We have eating habits. We have sleeping habits. We are influenced by our so, uh, so social factors. We are influenced by our own factors, emotions and all. Sleep, everything happen, is uh, uh, touching us in view of that. That's why we are changing. We are sometimes unhealthy obese, sometimes healthy obese. And these phase of transition have shown that meta analysis of 12 studies, including 5,900 individuals with three to 10 year follow up demonstrated that almost half of the participants who have been classified as MHO developed at least one metabolic abnormality in, in, their, in their life. And these are the criteria where your adipose tissue can expand from a healthy adipose tissue to unhealthy adipose tissue or to whether they it can become adipose tissue hyperplasia, then normal angiogenesis, normal adipogenesis, small insulin sensitivity adipocytes. And this, this, this positive thing, sakaratmak or nakaratmak, do tarike se in me change ho sakte or apne apne adipose tissue ko kaise jagah pe rakha hai. What is the rearing of your adipose tissue? Apne satsang me rakha hai ki ko sang me rakha hai. Iske saati sab kuch ho jata hai. Woi metabolically obese patient, now he has developed body well well uh, well shaped body and he has given a proper sanskar and this sanskar and legacy effect happens and uh, every time in our in our life this legacy is continued this is the legacy which is taken for generations to generations that's why we behave like different so written recent meta analysis from uk containing 
2 lakh patients data has shown that our men population physical gender wise are more prone to transitions from HMO, MHO to MUO because of so many reasons because of our 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 uh, smoking habits because of our day to day uh, alcohol and other things stress level so obesity significantly increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes and MHO should be considered as a benign condition because the meta analysis of prospective studies have shown that MHO is associated with significantly lower incidence of type 2. And this benign subphenotype of obesity has been challenged by data from large epidemiological, epidemiological studies that even these MHO patients are at higher risk of ASCVD in future if not properly carried or taken care by their physicians or if patient has not a proper submittance to regarding his or her conditions clinically. This has been shown in MHL metabolically healthy lean, metabolically healthy obese and metabolically uh, unhealthy obese patients that all CVK and ca cardiac re events rates are very high, very high when you, we talk about unhealthy obese patients when compared to metabolically healthy lean patients. So Indian obesity paradox, we are talking in our Indian criteria. So many Indian patients fit into the category of metabolic obese, but maybe they are in normal weight individual because we, 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 we know that uh, we are uh, Indian uh, thin fat obese Indians. Despite many having lean BMI, an adult Indian has more chances of having abdominal obesity. The body fat percentage of an Indian is significantly higher than a Western counterpart with similar BMI and blood glucose level. That's why in Indian uh, text, we, we, we should be very cautious regarding our weight gain and visceral obesity. This is the intra-abdominal fat adipose tissue and why these, uh, these all cascade of events happens because there is associated increase in inflammatory markers, C-reactive protein, free fatty acids, there's secretions of adipokine and there is decrease in adiponectin. And our previous speakers have given well, well enough, Dr. Uh, uh, so many speakers have shown uh, adiponectin issues and leptin issues and every correlation with dyslipidemia, insulin resistance and inflammation leading to high degree of increased cardiometabolic risk. So applying this concept of MHO in clinical practice that obesity treatment is challenging. Conservative treatment strategy aiming behavioral changes have very little long-term success. Weight maintenance have a set point. We need to go with a categorically important specific clinical criteria rather than just be a BMI centric. So shift is obesity treatment target should shift from weight loss to health parameter goals. Maintaining favorable cardiomatic uh, health parameter could be easier to achieve and may require only moderate weight loss in MHO. Dr. Dr. Raka will be having his last minute here. Yes, yes, I am clear. Sorry. There's some stucking in my slide changes. There, these are the pharmacological regimes. This is not my end topic, so I'll I'll leave it. So currently approved drugs, we have uh, already given by inputs from other speakers. So conclusion is that metabolic healthy obesity is a concept derived from clinical observation, and there is no standardized definition of MHO. But diagnosis of obesity is must. Fasting TRM glycerides should be less than 150, SDL more than 40 in men and 50 in women. Systolic blood pressure should be less than 130, diastolic blood pressure less than one, uh, less than 85, and fasting blood sugar less than 100. So with this age and uh, gender dependent variation, 10 to 30 percent of MHO is not a rare condition. And it represents a transient phenotype and we need to educate our population as better as we could. So about 50% of population with obesity are metabolically healthy and absence of metabolic syndrome, whereas only 5% of metabolically healthy when healthy is defined as the absence of any metabolic syndrome components and normal insulin sensitivity assessed by HOMA. Yeah? So these are eponyms, these are smart smart categorizations, but we need to be very specific. So that's why my last slide within poem, the tree of karma is my own poem. 
just published life is destined to our deeds we planned by genes cherished at home like seeds play at lap touched by many lives remains in cycle till touched by any human without humanity is just a machine let's play our rules as we are destined thank you so much for your patient care